That's sales and building your team. You can sell and sell and sell. You can sell $5,000 a month. In fact, I had a girl who sold $5,000 this past month on my team. And you're going to make a pretty good commission off of that, but you're going to hit a ceiling of what you can make. If you're building your team and you're sponsoring, we have people, we just had our first millionaire this year, we have people who are making more than $80,000 a month. That's more than most of the people in this country make in a year. And we have people in this company making that in a month. But your potential is just unlimited, and the way to get there is to grow your team. So, um, Bree Richardson, who's one of the top sellers and one of the top sponsors in this company, said, the more people you add to your team, the more zeros you add to your paycheck. And that's so true. I can tell you, that's so true. So let's take a look at some examples of residual income. At yellow status, if you're selling $1,000, you're going to make 250 in commission, 25%. 2,500, 5,000, like I mentioned, you're going to make $1,250. When you get to green status, orange, purple, black, where you're really growing your team, where you're getting elite leaders underneath you, you're going to make, at a minimum, $500 just off of your team. And as I said, you can be making up to $80,000 or more in a month. So, why do you want a sponsor? Rule of thirds, really common here. Um, at any given time, they say you're going to have a third coming, a third going, and a third working. What does that mean? That means a third of your team are those new people who haven't even joined you yet, who you're out there looking for, who are looking for you, who are looking for an opportunity. Uh, a third of your team is going. Those are people who may have started out strong and now you're seeing some attrition. May have been people who you signed up who never really did anything. That's I, I can tell you. I don't care if you're yellow status or black status. That will happen in this company. That will happen in every company. Think about your day job. There's going to be rollover, and there's going to be people who decide that they want to pursue something else. It's normal. Third, your team is working. Those are going to be people on your downline who are really consistently at it all the time. So in order to keep growing, you want to be focusing on that third that's coming in. Um, why does it matter to be consistently sponsoring? Well, as you promote, your circle requirements are going to go up. So for me, for Katrina at Black Status, you have to have $10,000 a month in sales from your circle alone. So you can't sit back in this company and say, all right, I have eight elites under me, and they're just going to do all the work, and I'm not going to do anything. Because as they grow, you've got to step up your game and grow too, and you have to have a team that can stand alone on its own. Otherwise, you're not going to get paid at the rank that you're at. Who do we sponsor? Everybody. You want to live unique, you want to speak unique, you want to be out there all the time talking to everyone. So, first places you're going are your customers and your former hostesses. These are the best people that you can reach out to because these are people you know already have an interest in the product. You already know they like the product. You already know if you have a hostess that has a successful party, you already know that they can do well. I had a girl who reached out to me, wanted to host a party, said, hey, I just want to tell you up front, I have no interest in selling, but I want to host a party, I want to do a fundraiser. Okay, great. Did a fundraiser. Still the most successful party I've ever had. And I went back to her afterward, I'm like, look, I know you said you didn't want to do this, but you were great. You had a great party, we made a lot of money for your cause. Think about it. No, 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 I'm not interested, I'm not interested. Um, fast forward 10 months, she's a presenter on my team. She's got a team of about 30 under her. So. Just because they're telling you no at the time, we'll talk about it in a minute, doesn't mean that that no is always a no. Friends and family, of course, those are going to be the first people that you reach out to. Those are going to be the easiest people to reach out to, hopefully. Um, and strangers. I mean, Austin gave a really good talk tonight about reaching out, Instagram, YouTube, your business page. Um, you know, we launched in Mexico this week. I, did a, a, I promoted my business page to some targeted areas in Mexico. And I've had two women come to me this week saying, I want to sell in Spanish. And I'm using translation software and giving them my very poor Spanish back, trying to tell them about the company. But they're interested right away. So you can find people you never would have had otherwise through those venues. OK. How to sponsor? I could sit here and talk to you all day about how you should sponsor, but how do we do it? Consistency. <coughs> Consistency is the number one thing in this business. I don't care if it's sales, I don't care if it's posting, 
I don't care if it's sponsoring, booking parties, you need to be working your business every day. This is a business, treat it like a business. If you slack, if you say you'll get back to it when you have time, you're not going to see the results. Consistency is so important. Uh, Sherry Brown, who is our first millionaire for Unique, said she has people come up to her all the time saying, how do I get to where you are? And that's what she said. If you want to have what I have, you got to do what I do. Be consistent, work your business every day. Um, <coughs> you can, the great thing about this business is you can work it from anywhere. So right now, I'm here for the weekend. I'm away from my home. And just because I'm on vacation doesn't mean that I can't be talking to people here. Last year when I came here on vacation was when I signed up Krista. And I ended up signing another person on that trip. And so not only did that vacation become a write-off, but I'm still working my business. I'm not saying, well, I'll get to it when I get back to my regular life. Work your business from everywhere. Um, time management, Nicole talked to us about. One of my favorite, favorite, favorite excuses, and probably the number one no I have that I hear when I talk to people is, I'm too busy. I'm too busy for this. And I love that excuse. Because let me tell you about too busy. I woke up at 4 a.m. this morning. I drug a screaming three-year-old with me on a cab, on a five-hour flight. I put on my makeup in an airport bathroom while she ran back and forth, literally hitting the walls back and forth while I'm trying to wrangle her, putting on makeup. Uh, Krista picked me up from the airport. We were late, fighting through traffic to get here. It's a good thing that you all arrived when you did and not a little earlier because I actually got changed right here in the middle of everything. <laughs> uh, while I was putting my makeup on, you know that really, like when you're in the bathroom and there's that tin where you put all the grossest stuff, that's like tampons and diapers and all that while I'm distracted putting my makeup on. My daughter's got both hands <laughs> in there playing. Um, my parents flew in. I'm literally pushing her out of the car to them. They don't live in the same state. I haven't seen them. Oh, hi, Mom and Dad. Good to see you. Thanks. Take the kid. Bye. Um, I work a full-time job. She's, as Nicole said about her child, my daughter is into everything. When my sponsor, Carrie, reached out to me about signing up, that's what I said. I'm too busy. No way. Too busy. Um, Brooklyn, who is a black status presenter under me on my team, it took me six weeks. I sent the girl free mascara. She still didn't sign up. I'm like, you have to do this. You have. She's like, I'm way too busy. Black status presenter, she had black in eight months. If you're busy, you're going to be good at this business. And if you're really busy, you're going to be really good at this business because you already know how to juggle multiple things in your life and you already know how to do it well. Kelly's sponsor, who's a blue status presenter, has eight children. Eight. And she's out working her business every month, promoting quickly, growing her team. I'm like, if you can do it with eight kids, I don't want to hear anybody <laughs> tell me they can't do it. Let's see, I'll give you a chance to stretch a little bit. Who, stand up if you have a child at home, or more than one child at home. <laughs> and stay standing. Stand up if you have another job besides unique. Stay standing, if you're, if you're already standing, stay standing. Stand up if you would call yourself a busy person. <laughs> Look around. Look around. Just about everybody, right? You're here. You're making the commitment. It's late at night. You're taking the time. You're a busy person. You're good at this business. Go ahead. You can sit down. Um, another thing in how to sponsor. If you have another job, when people say, what do you do for a living? Don't say, I'm a lawyer, I'm a teacher, I'm whatever your profession is. You say, I sell 3D mascara. Have you ever heard of it? People need to know what your business is if you want them to join in that business with you. Attraction marketing, Austin talked about this a little bit earlier. This is so, so important. Go to your Facebook page, go to your Instagram page tonight when you get home, and scroll through and take a look at what you're posting. 
And ask yourself what somebody from an outside perspective would think if they're looking at your page. Does it look like you would be somebody that they want to spend time with? Someone that they want on their friends list? Someone that inspires them to want to join your team? When you go to my Facebook page and you look, you're going to think that I have the greatest life in, in existence. There is never anything negative. I grew up in a mixed race, mixed religion, mixed political uh, party family, and I could give you all sorts of polarizing opinions. I don't put any of that on my page. I could tell you about the days when my three-year-old makes me actually sit down on the ground and cry because she's three, and that's what happens when you're a parent of a three-year-old. <laughs> you know, I could talk about soft stories. I could talk about skeletons. I don't do that because I'm running a business. I'm running a social media business. So when people come to my page, I want them to think, hey, that girl's life is awesome. I want to be part of whatever she's doing. Think about that, everything that you post. We have grievances, we want to air our grievances, but when you're running a uh, business, social media is not the place for that. Um, educate yourself. The step you're taking tonight is a great step. I was at a training in San Diego last month, and Amber Boy, who's sponsored by Katrina here, said, get your butt in the seats. Get to convention, get to trainings, do what you have to do. You can read everything you want on Facebook, on the website, but getting to a real training is going to help your business so much. Um, follow other leaders, follow people on YouTube. Go through, read files, watch the videos, know the product that you're selling. Get over your fear, that's a big thing. I find that most of the excuses that I get from my team about selling, about sponsoring, about hosting, all just come back to fear. Okay, how to sponsor. It's not about you. It's about the person that you're sponsoring. So don't just talk. Listen. Listen to what they're looking for because it's going to be different for everybody. I talked about this in the beginning. Some people are looking for a way to make a lot of money. Some people just want a hobby. Some people just want to be connected. Some people want to be able to get out of the house. Ask them, what's your interest in this business? What is it that you want? And then listen and tell them about what you can provide. Um, engage with them. Make a list. Make a list of your dream team and reach out to them. Ask for referrals. This is a great thing. The last two people that I personally signed up, I got through referrals. And it's a great thing because it takes the pressure off you and it takes the pressure off the person that you're asking. You reach out and you say, hey, you know, I'm really looking to grow my business. I, for me, I give away free mascara. And I say, I'm looking to grow my business. Is there anyone you know who you think would be really great at this? If you refer somebody to me that signs up, I'll send you free mascara. So, last two people I got were from referrals, and actually the last person I signed, not only did she sign up, but the person who referred her watched her for a little bit, saw that she had some success, and then said, oh hey, that looks pretty fun, I think I'm going to come back and sign up too. So it takes that pressure off of you asking that person, will you sign up and be part of my team, and it gives them the opportunity to say, well, what about me? I don't need to give you a referral, I want to do it. Um, <coughs> Use the three C's. How many of you have heard about three C's? Okay, less than half, good. So three C's, crazy, compliment, confidence. When you're reaching out to people, you say, hey Jed, this might sound crazy, but I've been looking at your photos on Facebook and you just have the greatest eyes already. Compliment. I really think you'd be great at selling for this business. Confidence. Have you ever thought about it? And if she says yes, then you give her information. If she says no, you know what? No one's ever going to be mad that you gave them a compliment. Three C's. It's very effective. Talk to everyone we covered. Um, you're going to hear no statistically. Uh, you're going to hear nine no's for every one yes that you get. So expect one out of ten. That's going to be your, your rate of return when you're asking about parties, when you're asking about um, selling when you're asking for sponsoring. So the more people you get out there and talk to, the better your odds are going to be. <coughs> be the unique girl or guy. This is really important. You don't ever want somebody to come to you and say, hey, do you still sell that mascara? You want to make it really obvious when they're ready that you're the person they want to go to. I had a girl last night, a good friend of mine. I've been selling for a year. She has never liked a post, she's never commented on a post, she's never asked me about Unique, she's never said anything, when I've mentioned it, she's let it go, and 
Guess who placed a $190 order last night? And it took a year, it was a good friend of mine. But that was timing for her, that was when she was ready. And when she was ready, she knew that she could come to me because in that year, I'm posting, I'm talking about it, I'm being consistent. She didn't have to say, oh, I'm interested in that mascara, I wonder who I know that sells it. Make sure that that's your face. Um, shouting from the rooftops. This is really, especially if you have a team, this is really important. I post every little success and every big success that I can <coughs> for the world to see. So when I earn a cruise, I'm posting about the cruise. When Austin promotes, I'm posting on my page and I'm tagging her so people see it on her page too. When I have a new presenter that hits 125 in sales and qualifies for the month, I'm posting about it. Because I want people to see that their success on my team, I want them to be part of that, and I want them to see that I'm excited about what I do, and they want to be part of something that's that exciting too. Uh, attraction marketing, we, you know, we've talked about a little bit. Austin did a good job covering that. Lifestyle posts is, is one thing that I'll, I'll touch on. I'm at the point now where I don't share what I make a month anymore. Um, I can tell you though that when you're at the point where you don't share what you make a month, that's a good thing. Uh, you can, you don't want to come back and say, hey, look, I just got this huge paycheck. Because people will look at that and they find it unattainable. And especially as you grow, people are going to find that more and more unattainable. So you want those posts to be something that seems attainable to everyone. So what I'll post is, just went to dinner. Thanks, Unique. Just bought diapers. Thanks, Unique. And keep it as something small that people think, hey, I could use a nice dinner out. I could use a little extra help with diapers. I could use a little bit of extra money and make them want to come to you from that. Uh, feel the notes. We talked about too busy. Um, the, the feel felt found technique is really good when you're saying that, uh, when people are telling you that you're too busy, you want to empathize, you want to hear them. And so you say, I understand how you feel. I felt the exact same way when I got started. But what I found is that this actually requires a lot less time than I thought because it involves posting on Facebook, which I'm already doing anyway. Um, People saying they don't have the money, talk about, okay, well, you know, let's talk about where that money might go in a month. Uh, how often are you going to Starbucks? How often, and, and maybe those are things, not Starbucks, I'm never gonna give up my Starbucks, but maybe there's something else that those people could put off for that time with the idea that, hey, with this $99 investment, you can make that back 10 times over, 100 times over, if we can figure out somewhere where we can budget that for you now. Um, timing, like I said, it, you know, what's right for one person might not be right for the next person. I told you about Krista, we talked about it, she signed up that night and started selling the next day. I told you about Brooklyn, took her six weeks and a free mascara. And the only reason she signed up, I know she's gonna watch this later, so I'm gonna tell the story. Uh, the only reason that Brooklyn signed up is because she had someone under her who was interested <coughs> in signing up and she asked if the woman could call me and talk. And so she called and we spoke and and she said, okay, you know, I'm really interested. We spoke for about an hour. She said, oh, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna sign up. I'm interested. And Brooklyn said, oh no, 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 no. I'm gonna go sign up and you can sign up after me. And that's what finally got her after six weeks. And that woman is actually now an elite leader on my team as well. Um, I don't know anyone. This is a big one. I don't have a big enough network. I don't know enough people. It's oversaturated. Um, Brooklyn came from a town called Cleveland, Tennessee. And if you don't live there or know somebody from there, you probably never heard of it. Cleveland has a population of 40,000. And there are now 54, I believe, presenters in Cleveland, Tennessee. And I think about 99% of them are mine. They're on my downline. And these girls sell like nobody's business. And they're all in this one small town. And that doesn't matter because we're a virtual business. We're a social media business. Um, Kelly and Krista are a great example. They live a few miles from each other. They never knew each other before. They're on different legs of my team and they're both top, top sellers every single month. Uh, I'm going to show you something. Oversaturation. I live in Los Angeles, as I said. Uh, I did a post last week for my website and I pulled the analytics of the first 30 people that went and took a look at my website. And that's where they're from. 
it's not all Los Angeles. It's not all Michigan. It's not. It's everywhere. When you're posting, when it's social media, oversaturation is not a concern in this business. Okay. So what to say when you're sponsoring? Be confident. If you don't believe what you're saying, they're not going to believe what you're saying. So if you go in, you're like, oh yeah, well you know, it's this new company, and um, I'm really happy with it. You should join. <laughs> Tell them how much you love it. Show them how much you're excited about it. Be confident in what you do. Be proud of what you do. We work for the fastest growing direct sales company in the country right now. In the world right now. Um, and we're mission based. And the foundation, by the way, you raised over $500 for the foundation. So, uh, um, be genuine. To, if you want to approach a stranger, hey, you know what? You have really great lashes. What do you use? Oh, have you ever heard of 3D mascara? Your lashes are already so great, I can only imagine how amazing this would look on you. Listen, we talked about earlier, find out what they're looking for. Be prepared. Have your business cards. Market your Facebook page. Um, when you Don't just hand out a business card and walk away. You hand out a business card and walk away, you're never going to hear from that person again. You say, oh, hey, I'm on Facebook. Are you on Facebook? I can add you right now. No, here, let me see your phone. I'll go in and I'll add you. You hand out a business card? Bye, I just threw that in the trash. You get on there and you have them as a friend on Facebook. Now they're there, they're seeing that update. You can keep reaching out back to them. Um, Facebook friends, do your research before you reach out to people. You see somebody that you went to high school with that you've lost touch with? Go on their page, take a look at what they're doing before you reach out. Don't just say, oh hey, I have a new business, you wanna join? Reach out to them and say, hey, I saw you had a baby six months ago. How is it? How are you adjusting being a new mom? Hey, I saw you got a promotion. How's it going? <laughs> hey, it's nice to talk to you. Don't just jump in with your knee. Don't be pushy. Okay. As I said, what not to say. Don't ever push. Strike up a conversation. And if you have to push people in the beginning to sign up, you're always going to have to push them. So... You go out, you make, that you make that initial connection, you follow up, and you let them come to you with questions. You let them work it in on their timing. If you're always hunting, if you're always on the hunt, people are going to feel hunted. Nobody wants to feel hunted. Um, don't say join me. Don't ever, 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 ever say join me. You're sharing an opportunity. You're not recruiting. You're sharing an opportunity. You think about what this business has done for you. Go back and think about why you signed up. What was, it, what was it that got you to sign up in the first place? And try to relate that to them. You want everyone to have the kind of success you're having and feel the kind of excitement that you're having, so you want to share that with them. When you look at where you can go in such a short time with this business, with something that you probably all thought would just be a little extra money in the first place anyway, it, it really is impressive the difference that it can make. So. I'll wrap up. Um, I'm going to do a final raffle and raffle off a collection for you. I know I talked about Q&A at the end. Um, I know it's late. We are actually right on time. It's amazing. One minute before 10 o'clock. Uh, so I'm happy to do I think the best way to do it is if you, know, if you guys want to approach the leaders up front here, we can answer some questions for you. Those of you that went to get on the road are free to do so, but I'll pull a number for you right now.